Hello, in this video we're going to talk about properties of double integrals. So there's three properties here and we will complete them as we talk about them. First of all, the double integral over r of f of xy plus g of xy dA is just equal to the sum of the integrals, double integral over r of f of xy dA plus the double integral over r of f of xy plus the double integral over r of g of xy a. Next, let k be a scalar. The double integral over r of k times f of xy dA is equal to k, we can pull the constant out in front, double integral over r of f of xy dA. And lastly, if f is greater than or equal to g on a, and let me draw a picture of that before I write down what that implies in terms of the integrals. So let's say f of xy is some lumpy bumpy surface that sits way up high here above the xy plane. And let's say that g is some other lumpy bumpy surface that sits below f, at least over this little region a, which is some patch down here. I'll label these pieces. So there's f of xy and this other function is g of xy. Okay, so if f sits higher, if f is greater than or equal to g, then that implies that the double integral, then the double integral over r of f of xy dA is greater than or equal to the double integral over r of g of xy dA. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So in this example we've got a double integral. We've got the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared y dy dx. And a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. You're going to work from the inside out. So you want to work from the inside out. And what I mean by that is we're going to start here and look at this inside piece first. All right, so if I were to rewrite this integral on the outermost layer, it's an integral in terms of x. So this is x equals 0 to 3. The next integral in is the integral from y equals 1 to 2. And our integrand is x squared y dy. And again, dx goes on the outside. So for every integral sign you need, you also need, okay, so what this means is the integral from x equals 0 to 3 dx. That's on the outside. On the inside, we're doing the integral from y equals 1 to 2 of x squared y dy. All right, so when we work on this integral here, we're integrating with respect to y. We're integrating with respect to y. And what that means is y is our variable. Everything else we're going to treat like a constant. Okay, it's kind of like partial derivatives, but now it's integration. So let's copy down the outermost integral. The outermost integral is x equals 0 to 3. And of course, we have the dx on the back end. And now let's work on this inner little integral. So what is the antiderivative of x squared y? Keep in mind, x is acting like a constant. So this is like some constant. I could call it k, ky. The antiderivative of k times y, well, it would be k over 2y squared. And that's exactly what we get here. So we get x squared over 2y squared. And we're going to evaluate that from y equals 1 to 2. Okay, and if you're unsure if that's the right answer, let's do our partial derivative with respect to y and see if we get back to what we started with. And sure enough, if we did do that, we would get back to x squared y. Okay, let's evaluate what we get. We still have the outer integral to do, and it's very important to keep everything uh, on your paper. We don't want to lose pieces. We don't want to write down just one integral by itself because that's not the problem. We want to keep everything lined up and well organized. Okay, so the first time through here, I'm going to plug in my upper limit of integration, which is y equals 2. So I've got an x squared over 2 times y squared. All right, so it's going to be 2 squared minus x squared over 2. Now I'm plugging in my lower limit of integration. 
So y squared, we've got a 1 squared. Okay, let's work that out. We have the integral as x goes from 0 to 3, dx on the back end. In the middle here, this simplifies to 4x squared over 2, so really that's a 2x squared. Minus, this simplifies to a 1 half x squared, and so we could call that 3 halves x squared. I'm going to bring the 3 halves out in front just to make our life a little easier when we do our integral with respect to x. Integral with respect to x, the antiderivative here would be 1 third x cubed. And again, we need to evaluate that from x equals 0 to 3. So these 3's will cancel. And what we end up with is we end up with plugging in the 3, we get 27 over 2 minus 0. So the final answer here is 27 over 2. Okay, let's do one more example. Okay, let's do one more example. So in this example, we have the double integral over r of 4xy squared over x squared plus 1 dA. And r is the rectangular region from 0 to 4 in the x direction and negative 3 to 3 in the y direction. Okay, so let's set this up. I'm going to put y equals negative 3 to 3. The next layer in, I'm going to put x equals 0 to 4. And then our integrand is a 4xy squared over x squared plus 1 dx. And the reason I'm putting dx there is because the variables have to match. And then the next layer out, I'm going to put the dy. And again, that's because those variables have to match on the outside. And you might be wondering, could you switch the order? So could we do the x's on the outside? And the answer is yes for this particular function. And that's actually our next video where we're going to talk about Fubini's theorem. So if you're just doubting that right now, you could certainly work through this problem both ways and see that the order does not matter. But we will discuss that more in the next video. So for now, let's compute this as follows. I am going to highlight our integral in x with another color. So this is x equals 0 to 4. And let's see, we've got 4, just going to rewrite this, 4y squared x all over x squared plus 1 dx dy. All right, so let's work on this integral with respect to x, first of all. So on the outside, we still have y equals negative 3 to 3. 4y squared is like a constant in terms of doing integrals with respect to x, so I'm going to pull that outside. And now I'm looking at x over x squared plus 1 dx dy. For this integral in terms of x, I'm going to use a u substitution. So let's let u equal x squared plus 1 du equals 2x dx. I don't like the 2 in there. I don't have a 2 in my problem, so I'm going to divide that over. And now I'm ready to substitute. I do want to keep track of my limits of integration. So when x equals 0, that implies that u equals 1. And similarly, when x equals 4, that implies that u equals 17. Okay, so let's do that. Again, I'm going to copy down my outer integral. We would not want to lose any pieces of our work, so I'm just going to keep all of that straight. We're now looking at an integral from u equals 1 up to u equals 17. Instead of the x dx, instead of the x dx, I'm going to put in a 1 half du. And instead of the x squared plus 1 in the denominator, I'm going to put in a 1 over u. I still have a dy on the outside. Tidying this up, on the outside I can combine the 1 half and the 4. I could even pull that way out to the outside. 
So we have 2 integral from negative 3 to 3 of y squared. So that took care of those pieces. And now doing the integral of 1 over u, I'm going to have natural log of the absolute value of u, and we're going to evaluate that as u goes from 1 to 17. So this is working out quite nicely. If we evaluate, we're going to get natural log of 17 minus natural log of 1, which is just 0. So natural log of 17, that's just a constant. We'll pull that out in front. We have 2 times natural log of 17, and now I'm looking at the integral from negative 3 to 3 of y squared dy. And so our final answer works out to be 36 ln of 17.